Therefore, if you are raised with Christ, look for the things that are above where Christ is sitting at God's right side. Welcome to this service of worship. We're glad that you're with us. We have a few things that we want to um, raise with you as we continue in worship. First, a faith that reaches. How would you answer the question? How has your faith grown? What heights do you set out to reach in service to your faith? And if you're good with where you are, why is that? And most importantly, where do you imagine God wants you to be in your faith? Think about that throughout the week. We also um, want to continue to encourage you with Open Door. This is phase one of our evangelism training as a congregation. And listen, it's really not that complicated. There, there, there's, there's not a whole lot um, to, to consider. It's simply the sharing of good news. That can happen with folks over the phone. It can happen around your dinner tables. It can happen um, around um, a game. It can happen around most any gathering. Just take a moment to simply share something that God has done in your life. Now, next week, we're going to be talking about phase two and learning to put some, I don't know, learning to put a whole lot more language around our faith. But for the moment, we, we continue with phase one um, as we seek to embody this most important activity as a church. Now, we also um, want to name for you that Mary Jean Covington, Nanette Peddlety, and Phil Ray are the 2022 nominating committee. And as they work and as you um, come up with suggestions toward um, our class of 2024 elders, um, let me invite you to please first seek your candidate's permission before suggesting them. And then the other piece that's very important, pray over that choice. Uh, it's a very important part of the process, and we appreciate any help and preparation that the congregation can make to this effort. Now, we also invite you to a new event, Happy Hour. This is um, August the 2nd at 11 a.m. We will enjoy hot dogs, chips, watermelon, dessert, sing gospel music, um, and have a great time. Happy Hour is a new event at Hawfields as a way to get together for a light meal and activity and enjoy a time of fellowship. So please make yourself available for Happy Hour. Um, last but not least, we want to mention to you our school supplies drive. The Presbyterian women will be collecting school supplies for children at Garrett Elementary on um, from July the 31st through August the 14th. Um, items can be placed in containers in the fellowship hall and the vestibule, and the suggested items are, are there before you on the screen, um, including wide rule, notebook paper, elementary scissors, and glue sticks. So whatever you can, please collect and bring them so that we can make sure that our children are well equipped as they go into, into school. Now, with all of that in mind, let us take a deep breath, silence our devices, and continue in worship.
it can be very hard to be motivated to reach further with our faith. Sometimes good enough feels sufficient, but God wants better for us, and we need to admit we don't always agree. Let us confess together. God of standards, sometimes we settle for less. Sometimes we move the goalposts in our favor. Sometimes we rationalize until your standard cannot be recognized in us. Help us have the strength to push, to, to, to reach, to strive. Wherever we are in our faith, help us keep you, keep Christ in full view. We can do better, O oh God. Help us sincerely want to. Gratefully we pray. Amen. As always, thank you for listening, God. Amen. Okay, I have a dilemma for you, but first, let's define some terms, and let's begin with the idea of standards. Now, what, what would you say are standards? Now, the dictionary says the following, right? One, a level of quality or attainment, or two, an idea or thing used as a measure, norm, or model in comparative evaluations. Well, that clears it up, does it, doesn't it? Look, do you have standards? Of course you do. We all do. Where we went into friction is that we all have different standards. And even when we agree on what the standards should be, we differ very often on degree. That's what makes the great debates of our times so difficult. Different standards of purpose, priority, proof, and fidelity. I mean, look, it's an easy thing to admit. It's important to have standards. We need to be able to have things in our lives to live up to. I mean, we need goals, methods, morality we can agree on to make living among each other possible. If shopping at the grocery store was a free-for-all, the stores wouldn't do much business. If I didn't have a reasonable idea that my car could park without incident, if I couldn't cruise up and down the aisles finding what I need, and if I couldn't then pay and take my items in some orderly fashion, you would either have to be good at battle, yet another standard, or just not go to the store at all. And look, what's good for me might not be good for you. My idea of healthy might not be the same as yours. Your idea of rich might depend on something other than money. Our ideas about friendship, marriage, guns, hope, love, peace might all range and scale differently because of a host of factors. But then there's the need for flexibility. Now, I can demand that people speak clearly and articulately. 
but I should probably be flexible when, with people just learning how to speak. And, and look, I can demand loyalty at all times, but sometimes, I don't know, people get mixed up about what that really means. I might have to forgive. My dad's denomination had an absolute rule that only men could be in charge, and certainly only men could be ordained as deacons and pastors. But I'll never forget Dad telling me that in his prayers, he asked for God to raise up leaders, and the only people showing up were women. He had to be flexible in his congregation, in his church. Now, about flexibility, the dictionary says that it's the quality of bending easily without breaking. Bending easily without breaking. So, it's not exactly like having no standards, but it's recognizing that sometimes the standards have to be able to adjust as far as you can go without becoming no standards at all. It means allowing space to learn something about someone that can change your perspective or perception. It might mean changing your standards. Hmm. Well, herein lies the dilemma, right? I mean, which is more important? having standards, or being flexible. Take a few moments to contemplate your own answers before we consider God's. So for the first part of God's answer, we're going to be looking at the letter to the Colossian church. This is chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. The mission of life in Christ. Listen for the word of God to us all. Therefore, if you were raised with Christ, look for the things that are above where Christ is sitting at God's right side. Think about the things above and not things on earth. You died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. So put to death the parts of your life that belong to the earth, such as sexual immorality, moral corruption, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. The wrath of God is coming upon disobedient people because of these things. You used to live this way when you were alive to these things, but now set aside these things such as anger, rage, malice, slander, and obscene language. <laughs> Don't lie to each other. Take off the old human nature with its practices and put on the new nature, which is renewed in knowledge by conforming to the image of of the one who created it. In this image, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all things and in all people. Therefore, as God's choice, holy and loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, be tolerant with each other, and if someone has a complaint against anyone, forgive each other. As the Lord forgave you, so also forgive each other. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Paul goes right at several issues in his letter, and it seems clear that he is responding to questions to which we're, we aren't privy. But the thrust of what he puts forward is consistent with the vision for humanity God has been painting since the beginning. He encourages us to look for the things that are above. Well, above what? You may have heard it said that she's above all that, or he's staying above the fray. I mean, it's the idea that whatever is being said or done stands out, that it is not necessarily conventional. 
being God's person doesn't necessarily follow human standards. And so the string of sins that Paul points to in verse 5 might in their way all be symptoms of one another. Synonyms, rather, of one another. But taken as distinct, they point to a pretty basic moral standard of God's. Don't be selfish. You see, sexual immorality takes place when we put our needs ahead of our partners. That's why pedophilia is so wrong. Because of the relationship dynamic, there is no partnership, no ability on the part of the child to consent. That's why rape is wrong. That's why having affairs is wrong. The the one to whom we've committed cannot consent. Moral corruption means you reach what you want despite what it might cost to those around you. Lust means the only thing you're concerned with is your pleasure alone. Evil desire means setting aside all other considerations in order to justify some end goal of yours. And greed, seriously, greed is a monster. A monster that has plagued and ruined our humanity since Adam and Eve. Nothing is ever enough. We always want more. But it's important to name a distinction here. You know, with greed, it's not like there's an overwhelming desire for everything to be fair or for children to have good homes or for people to have access to medicines they need, for examples. I mean, can you imagine if greed really worked that way? That we would find irresistible the desire to see everyone taken care of, to share everything that they can. What human problem could you point to that wouldn't be solved? As it is, greed, like all the other sins named, is rooted in selfishness. Now, Paul's point is further made by the behaviors he discourages. And again, the list might be all synonyms of one another. But together, they point to a larger vision of humanity. The list in verse 8 points to ways that we treat each other. Um, that we treat others, the behaviors that we think people deserve to have from us. Look, people deserve better than anger from us. People deserve better than rage from us. People deserve better than malice from us, deserve better than slander from us. People deserve better than obscene language from us. And listen, let's be real. This is talking about more than just cuss words. This is talking about language that disparages, language that harms, language that demeans. You know, we try to avoid it. We do. We try to rationalize away the need for it, but we can't. We try hard to deny its importance until we find ourselves in need. God's command to love our neighbor is the higher standard that there is. Now listen, it's an easy thing to do things the world's way. I mean, if I can say that you don't deserve my help, you don't deserve my kindnesses, you don't deserve to be treated as a human being, then I can rationalize any behavior toward you that I wish. We, you know, we pick on the Nazis because they're easy. You know, they said that, um, that they said all the people that they scapegoated um, we're not ideal humans, if human at all. You know, in the movie Schindler's List, a German officer, Amon Goethe, orders his Jewish household servant, Helen Hirsch, um, to stand in his basement, scantily clad. And he comes downstairs and circles her while questioning whether or not she is truly a rat, vermin, before striking her for tempting him. Thus, the Holocaust. You know, we call Native Americans, we have called Native Americans savages and Japanese Americans enemies of the state. Slave traders don't think of their merchandise as human. Sociopaths can't even access their own humanity. But listen, these are all extreme examples. The point is the same when not extreme. Thinking of others, anyone, as less than, other than, empowers us to easily I don't know, treat them outside of their actual humanity. And it's not just true in big ways. It's true in small ways that add up to generations 
of inhumanity. If only, though, it were that simple. Decide who deserves what treatment and then act accordingly. I mean, most of us deal in a world far more complicated and subtle, but nevertheless in need of God's standard. If love my neighbor is the standard that I'm living by, then my choices get much more challenging and difficult fast. It's not that it's hard to know what to do. It's hard to want to. When someone is cursing me, it's beyond easy to simply curse them back. It's much more difficult road to love them in return. If someone treats me unfairly or robs me or harms me or otherwise disparages me, it's very hard, a very hard standard to love them as I love myself. God's standard is higher. It's quite above what we usually do. In fact, listen to the way Paul describes it in the letter to the Philippian church. This is chapter 3, verses 10 through 16, pressing toward next level faith. Listen further for the word of God to us all. The righteousness that I have comes from knowing Christ, the power of his resurrection, and the participation in his sufferings. It includes being conformed to his death so that I may perhaps reach the goal of the resurrection of the dead. It's not that I've already reached this goal or have already been perfected, but I pursue it so that I may grab hold of it because Christ grabbed hold of me for just this purpose. Brothers and sisters, I myself don't think I've reached it, but I do this one thing. I forget about the things behind me and reach out for the things ahead of me. The goal I pursue is the prize of God's upward call in Christ Jesus. So all of us who are spiritually mature should think this way. And if anyone thinks differently, God will reveal it to him or her. Only, let's live in a way that is consistent with whatever level we have reached. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was amazed, okay, at the accomplishments of our athletes in the world track and field competition recently. Several of them set new records, which means... Um, that they set new standards for what is achievable. But I did. I know they didn't just walk into the field, run and jump and redefine history. They had to work at it. They had to train. They had to reach, desire, hope, fail and fail and fail and believe. They had to condition both their bodies and minds for the rigors of the events. They had to be coached, challenged, encouraged, set goals, break them, and set new ones. And I have to say, just thinking about that makes me tired. There are some days where I want God to just make me better, make my life better. Just have people think I'm spiritual. Let my eighth grade Sunday school Bible education be enough to get me enough points on my heaven card to get in the door. I don't want to be a a fanatical believer just enough to make sure that I'm good to go, okay? But God wants more for us than this. It's akin to the difference it makes when we sing together with our heads down as opposed to when our heads are up. We sound louder, brighter. The music itself lifts. Everything rises. God wants us to look up, to reach for what's above. As Paul writes, So well, brothers and sisters, I myself don't think I've reached it, but I do this one thing. I forget about the things behind me and reach out for the things ahead of me. Get this, the goal I pursue is the prize of God's upward call in Christ Jesus. You know, it's an upward call because it raises our gaze. You know, instead of thinking of only ourselves, we get to see ourselves as a part of God's plan. Instead of protecting our own stuff, we become stewards of God's blessings that have no measure and no end. Instead of having to prove our goodness, we can simply lay claim to God's goodness in our lives. And instead of trying to maintain walls of suspicion, walls of hate, 
walls of inconvenience, walls of lies and deception, walls of habits we can't even remember getting into. We can hold God's standard before us of love and meet life with true flexibility, meeting our moments without actually breaking. This means praying for more than just stuff we want. It means praying for our enemies and praying that God truly changes us. And with that, we need to acknowledge that God still has work to do with us. Whatever our background, whatever our age, whatever our ethnicity, whatever our beliefs and philosophies, whatever our allegiances, it means making different choices in small and large ways every day. It means thinking of ourselves as training, even when we're tired, even when we're grieving, especially when we're celebrating. It means searching for God's voice in the people who are trying to help us. It means making amends before the other person admits what they did wrong. It means being angry and then choosing to do something about it rather than letting it stew. It means seeing clearly that the image of God in you is the same image of God in everyone else you encounter. Everyone. That's not just a nice way of looking at things. It's the standard by which all other standards are set. Because y'all, being Christian is more than just a change in attitude. It's more than just self-help or talking ourselves into goodness. Being Christian means putting in the work, being transformed and changing, not just ourselves, but the world. That's God's plan. And it's high-minded. In the name of the one who truly is above the fray. Amen.
giving is a form of gratitude because it shows that we're aware that we've been blessed and that we stand always in God's grace. So let us move beyond obligation or ritual. Let us reflect on what we have given in all our various ways, whether online, in person, in kindnesses, in money, in prayers, in time, in our presence. Let us pray together. God who teaches, take these representatives of our blessings and wealth and make the world around us rich. Take us and make us gifts also, inspiring the transformation you are seeking for our world, yes, but for those right around us as well. Amen. As we pray, there will be an opportunity for you to raise um, your personal or private prayers as a part of our prayer together. And so when the opportunity presents itself, take it. Let us pray together. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our prayer is simple. Lord it over us. May your standard become our standard. And may we exhibit the flexibility your love demands. Help us see the world, see our reaction to it as a part of the training you give us, you give to us as humanity. Help us reach past the goals we set for ourselves. May your upward call to a life in Jesus Christ be the standard by which all life becomes ordered. We have to admit a truth, though. Loving our neighbor is not easy. Setting aside what we want, what we see, what we feel sometimes is impossible. But help us see the truth of the life of Christ. You know this about us. You've been there. Help us trust you when you say you can do it. Help us rely on your strength for the small changes, and may they prepare us for the big. May we always know you love us, even as you transform us. Draw our gaze above to where you are, to what you hope, to what you will, and may everything in our lives come to point to your goodness with us. Whether we're tired or full of energy, whether we're feeling good or feeling pain, whether we feel sure or we have insurmountable doubts, wherever we are in our faith, meet us there. And help us grow forward, upward. When confronted with sorrows, imposed and unimaginable, let us respond with love. When facing disease in our bodies and our and or our, in our hearts, from news, podcasts, viruses, injuries, unresolved histories, constant pressures or waves of bad circumstances, let us respond with love. When hearing about wars and rumors of wars, when contemplating our responses to violence, when trying to make sense of a nonsensical world, let us respond with love. May we be emboldened to share the story of your life with us, how you choose us, how you have raised us, how you have redeemed and remade us. May any who encounter us find a library of stories of your love and mercy in our lives and come away seeing you more clearly and reach for you also. May evangelism truly be a part of our ordinary, everyday lives. And so we pray for so many in our community who are sick, shut in, and in rehab and expecting procedures. We pray for those among us who've lost loved ones even this week. We think of those in our public and private prayer lists. Lord, intervene as only your mercies can. Help us not only reach for your hand, O oh God, help us be your hands. Hear us now as we pray. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for transforming us. Thank you for, for teaching us even how to pray when words fail us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us say together our benediction. Being Christian is more than just a change in attitude. Being Christian means putting in the work, being transformed, and changing not just ourselves, but the world. That's God's plan. And it is high-minded. Get up. Take heart. Jesus is still calling you. Go. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds this day and forevermore. Amen. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. 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 Alle, alle, alle. Hallelujah. Alle, alle, alle. Hallelujah. Alle, alle, alle. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.